Hey guys, this is a quick and easy tutorial on how to use VORs. First thing you're going to want to do is select the VOR you're going to be using. VORs look like this. They have a circle with multiple bearings, like a compass, and in the middle is a little triangle. Now they can also be at airports, so the triangle will not be there, but the bearings are always there. Another way to do that is from the actual G1000 itself on the MFD, which I will show you now. To find a VOR from the MFD, we are going to turn this FMS knob. Up here you can see the name of the folder that you're in. So as we change, next is airport information, after that the nearest section. And down here you can see that there are several different tabs which you can scroll through on the upper or smaller knob. So you have nearest airport, nearest intersections, nearest NDBs, and what we're looking for, nearest VOR. We can see that the TFD, or the Stanfield Casa Grande, is the closest one to us. If that isn't the one that you want, you click on the FMS knob, and then continue to go up or down to select the one that you want. Now since we do want the TFD, you'll have all your information here, and you can see just like on the sectional chart or the ruled VFR map, you have this circle with the bearing and the triangle type thing in the middle. Now that you've identified the VOR that you want, we're going to look for the frequency, which on the stand field you can see is 114.8. There are other frequencies that will be outside of the box, but you want the one right here. So in this case for the Gila bend, it's 116.6. But for us, it is going to be 114.8. On the MFD, we can get the same information here in the frequency section. So if we were to change, you can see that the frequency changes as we go through the VORs. Since we do want TFD, we do have 114.8, which was the same on the VFR world map. We're going to change this by coming over to the nav knob. Uh, the lower changes the first numbers and the upper or smaller changes the numbers after the point. So we want 114.8. And so we can change that like this. Or another easier way, I'm going to go ahead and change this, is if we have this already set up in the MFD, we have the frequency here, we can click on this frequency soft button and it selects it here. If we click enter, it'll automatically bring it right up here. Now it is not active. The green section is the active section. So to make it active, we have to switch it in with this soft key. Now it is the active 114.8. Our frequency is set to go to the Stanfield VOR. Now that we have the frequency set, we do have to make sure that we have it in the heading indicator here. So we will come over to the PFD and we will change this arrow by clicking the soft key CDI. And as you can see, we have GPS, VOR1 or NAV1, and VOR2 or NAV2. And as you can see, the green is the one that is selected. So we want 114.8. UR1, NAV1, 114.8. This is going to be the NAV that we want. Now to go directly to the VOR, we must change the CRS. So we can click it like this, and as we click it, the line will come in, and you want it to be exactly set as closely as possible. So this would be the bearing that we want. An easier way to do that, if you are going directly to, you can actually click in the CRS knob and it will get you the bearing that is the closest to the VOR. Now that we're on our way to the VOR, you can see we have this little airplane on this line. We'll go ahead and bring this PD PFD up. And what we want to do is point the airplane towards the line 
to make sure that we are on the correct heading. So I'm going to get off course a little bit so we can see what that looks like. I'm going to come over to the left. As you can see, the airplane is pointing slightly away from the line, and that line is moving away. Now we want the line to be lined up. So if we're off like this, we're going to point the airplane towards the line. And here we go now. Now our airplane is pointed towards the line and that line will start coming in. And right about there, we can even out. And we are pointed with the line. The closer we get to the actual VOR, the line will move more drastically. So you can see we still have a little ways to go, but not too far. So this line will move pretty rapidly, but if you were several miles away, it would move very slowly. To identify our from bearing, we have to draw a line from the VOR to the location we want to go to, which in this case is the Eloy Airport. And on the circle, you'll find these bearings. And every once in a while, there will be a number. So this one is kind of covered up, but you can see this is 1, 2, and this is 1, 5. So 12, 11, 10, and that would be 9. So this would be 9, 5. And our direction would be about 9, 4. Now, on this website, it conveniently gives us that number right here. So our direction is going to be 94 from the VOR. Now that we know that we had to have to head on the 94 bearing, our bearing is currently right here. So we'll change this until it reaches 94. And there it is right there. And you can see that's the direction we're heading. That's the direction of the VOR, so we are heading from the VOR. Currently it's on autopilot, so it's going to continue to turn until this line matches up here. To see what that looks like on the MFD, let's go ahead and zoom out. And here is about the 9-4 area. So our airplane is going to come in and match up with this line heading out of 9-4. And as you can see here, now that we're heading on this 9-4 direction from the VOR, we're going to be running directly into E60 or Eloy. Thanks for watching. That's the quick and dirty tutorial on how to use VORs for navigation. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Make sure to follow me here on YouTube as well as on Twitch, Clint underscore Erp, where I do live stream.